And joining us now is the author of Defeating Jihad and the Distinguished Chair of Military Theory at the Marine Corps University, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Dr. Gorka, radical Islamists have been telegraphing this very specific attack now for a very long time. Um, is the West ever going to wake up in terms of what it is that the caliphate means? In other words, there is a purposeful caliphate by radical Islamists that they want Islam and Islamic law to rule the entire world. Do you think most people understand that yet? I think you do, Sean. I think uh, Fox viewers understand it. The military that I have the honor of working with and the FBI agents that I work with, uh, they get it. They get it. That's not the problem. The problem are the decision makers, the people sitting in the White House, the National Security Council, Jay Johnson, the Attorney General. I mean, what, what is the president going to do tomorrow? Is he going to ban trucks in America? Because that's what he said after Orlando and San Bernardino, we have to ban semi-automatic rifles. I mean, this is the, the, the absurd situation. We have a political elite in a fantasy land, and we have you, your viewers, your family, my family, living in the world of the caliphate, expanding and taking its war to America and to our allies, Sean. You know, I, I want to read something to you, Dr. Gorka, as we look at these horrific evil images, 77 dead, 50 people injured, more carnage, another terror attack. Uh, it seems the world does not want to wake up. The president did say a terror attack. He did not say it looks like an Islamic terrorist attack. We'll get to that later tonight. But we have intelligence officials in this country. They drew attention to al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. And in the fall of 2010, they have an online edition of their propaganda magazine. I know you know it well. It's called Inspire. And it called on their followers to use trucks as killing machines to mow down civilians. And by the way, Al-Qaeda and ISIS share the same techniques. The magazine reads, quote, the idea is to use a pickup truck as a mowing machine, not to mow grass, but to mow down the enemies of Allah. To achieve maximum carnage, you need to pick up as much speed as you can, which, by the way, happened in this case, while still retaining good control of your vehicle. The ideal location is a place where there are maximum members of pedestrians and at least a number of vehicles. In fact, if you can get through to a pedestrian-only location that exists in some downtown areas. Now, that, spelled out, that was spelled out in 2010, Dr. Gorka, and it seems like the West and I will include America in this, is not taking this level of threat seriously, which is why we have incident after incident. Sure. This is exactly why I wrote Defeating Jihad. I want to send a very clear message to all Americans. You are on the front line of this war. It's not just the people who wear the cloth of the republic or who carry a badge or a gun. It's the soccer moms at the soccer game. It's the people picking up their groceries at the grocery store. It's those American kids in a concert, in an American concert in downtown Paris or at a Christmas party in San Bernardino. There is no front line on this war. The front line is when you leave your house in the morning. That's the front line. And, and this is the reality. The enemy has a plan. The enemy is dedicated. And I know one thing, Sean, and you know this as well as I do. If the political correctness continues, we will see attacks like this in America. They will continue to bring the jihad to our shores. We have now a hundred. It's gone up since we last spoke. We have now killed or arrested 107 ISIS individuals on U.S. soil since the caliphate was declared. Not seven. Dr. Gorka, it, it, yeah, 107. It, it, many, <clears throat> many of the topics we've been discussing this presidential election season, immigration, Donald Trump talking about at least a temporary ban on people coming from countries that practice Sharia law. Um, we have, we watched the Islamization of Europe, and I've discussed it at length on this program and on my radio program. You know, for example, most people don't know that Great Britain has 88 Sharia courts or that no-go zones actually do exist in France. I know because I've covered it here on this program. But if somebody grows up in a country that believes that men can tell women how to dress, whether they can go to school, whether they can go to work, if they tell women that they can't drive, if a woman needs four male eyewitnesses for rape, and you want to come to America, how do we know that you don't want to advance 
your theocracy, your caliphate, or whether or not you want to assimilate. How can you possibly ascertain what is in the heart of that individual? It goes to the heart, the very heart of this election campaign. Exactly, Sean. Uh, without a doubt, this election, November, will not be about pocketbooks. It won't be about Obamacare or tax rates. It's going to be about innocent people being mowed down as they have been in America and in Europe. It's going to be a national security election. And what are the American people going to want more and more? Just look at Donald Trump's figures in the last 10 days. His figures are increasing because he says, I'm going to be a law and order candidate and I'm going to fight a war. He is explicit. This is a war. This isn't violent extremism, as the Obama administration would have you be believe. It's not about jobs for jihadis. It's about crushing a global conspiracy that wants to enslave or murder us, Sean. And people are ready you know, after, fifth, after you know, seven years, they're ready for leadership. You know, you know I, I, I love the fact that you point this out. This is a winnable war. We are talking about the free world and the United States of America and the greatest military on the face of this earth. But it, it really does highlight... You know, when the president would use the euphemisms, man caused disasters, overseas contingency operations, uh, workplace violence, even today he said, yes, he did say terror. I guess that's a step in the right direction, but he won't recognize Islamic terrorism, which is what this likely is. Um, and then we get to the issue of $150 billion to Iran. And then we get to the issue of pulling out of Iraq early and creating a vacuum in Iraq and Syria for ISIS. And then we get into the issue of the president given Mohammed Morsi, a former Muslim Brotherhood terrorist, you know, F-16s and $1.5 billion in tanks. And it really does highlight, in retrospect, how dangerous these decisions were, does it not? Oh, completely. I mean, thank you for, for honing in on this, the subtitle of my book. Everybody gives me grief that I say the winnable war. But it is winnable if we have American leadership. But to win a war, you need two requirements, Sean. Sure. Number one, you have to admit you're at war, which this administration doesn't. And secondly, you have to want to win. And again, if you look at the decisions in Iraq, the decisions in Libya, in Syria, with Iran, it is not about winning. The president has said, the president has said that global warming is the primary threat to America. Well, I'd like somebody at a press conference tomorrow to ask him if he still thinks it's global warming that endangers the American citizen. Wow. What, you know, you bring that up. You bring up jobs for jihadis. I mean, it, frankly, I, I don't have strong enough words to say just how asinine a lot of these policies are and these euphemisms are and these you know, you know, cliched statements of him. The French mayor has spoken out. Now, we watched the unfolding of the refugee crisis all across Europe. We're debating how many people to take into this country. Donald Trump has pointed out that Hillary wants a... 550 percent increase in the number of refugees that we're taking in. Each refugee, by the way, would cost the American taxpayer $20,000. But now the French mayor says no more Muslims. He orders the destruction uh, of, of certain places where there's over 7,000 Muslims in that particular area. We saw what happened in Germany. We saw what happened in Belgium. Do you think Europe now revisits the idea of their immigration policies? Well, look, if common sense had any role to play, uh, you think it would. I think the Brexit is an indication of the average person saying enough is enough. I mean, you know, just a couple of data points, Sean. Uh, somebody who tracks these things in the government sent me a map of Nice this evening. Within walking distance of the promenade where the attack occurred is a zone urban sensitif, what, what, what others have called an enclave. Within walking distance of the attack is an area that does not have full sovereign control by the federal authorities. Secondly, um, this should make everybody wake up. I've been told by a very reliable source that of 2,000 refugees we've let into the country recently from the war zones in the Middle East, once they are given refugee status and handed over to the charities that house them and give them addresses, the federal authorities are not allowed to know the address of where they're living because that impinges upon their privacy rights. Think about that, Sean. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's profound. It's insanity. You know, I, I it's insanity. It's... A, 
It is. Um, I want to lean on your position as the distinguished chair of military theory at Marine Corps University, uh, Dr. Gorka, and I want to ask you this. I, I look at Vietnam. I look at 58,000 Americans died in that conflict and that war. I look at Iraq and I look at Afghanistan and I see that 5,000 American you know, men and women, American treasure, blood, sweat, financial costs and tears. And I see in each conflict and war, maybe they start out with all the best intentions. These wars then get politicized in D.C. We end up pulling out early. And the very gains that these Americans sacrifice for are then handed over to the enemy. I don't think we can fight wars this way anymore. We can't have kids go to Iraq or go to Afghanistan and they don't even have up armored Humvees and knock on door to door, you know, trying to find a single terrorist in one place. You talk about winning this war. How do we win this war without the political, without politics getting in the way and stopping victory? We, we can't. If we allow politics into the threat assessment or national security, we will continue to lose. The political elite, the, look, I completely dismiss this conventional wisdom of what is called the CNN effect, that if, if sooner or later we see too much bloodshed, too many of our Marines or soldiers injured, and then the American public says, enough, bring them home. It's not true, Sean. The American public will support any war that is just if the leadership in Washington explains to them the stakes involved. Look at World War II. Yeah. We mo mobilized 12 million Americans to destroy the Nazis. We need the leadership in D.C. to say, look, if we don't win this war, your children yeah. may be targeted. That's what it takes. <clears throat> Dr. Gorker, I always appreciate having you on. I wish, um, again, we see evil in our time. America defeated fascism and Nazism and Imperial Japan, and America can defeat this evil enemy in our time. But we better have the will and the desire and the knowledge and the understanding of what it is we're facing, or we will not win. Dr. Gorka, thank you.